of 3rd John. We've been looking in a series called Kingdom Prosperity. We just have one more uh, week next week. And so I want to remind you, this is the actual, the final lesson of uh, teaching. Next week, we are going to do a recap just to make sure you have it in your head. And then we're going to pray. And we are going to literally pray to uh, break curses and we're going to pray for God's prosperity. And so I have been urging you for the last week, I want you to write down very specifically what it is you, first of all, need from God. If it's debt, if it's finances and amount, how much do you need from God? Or what is the need in housing vehicles, whatever it might be. And beyond that in your faith, what is it you want from God? Write it down. We're going to come. We're going to pray. You writing it down is for you, not for me. You're not going to give me your request. It's for you, but I want you to engage your faith uh, very specifically about that. So that's next week, and then we'll wind up our series. Okay. Uh, Looking at the issue of prosperity that's been the entire series, by definition, prosperity is a thriving or growing condition, and we're applying this, of course, in finances. And our, uh, the overall uh, theme of this series is God wants you to have more than you have right now. And uh, biblical reasons why we've been looking at that. Okay, today's lesson is the idea of being blessable, blessable. Third John, verse two, let's get that. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health, just as your soul prospers. Okay, that's our foundational scripture. This is the New Testament. God wants you to prosper in all things. Of course, that would be in the area of money. Okay, today is, our lesson is called being blessable. And let's look at our first thought. Let's talk about untrustworthy stewards. So here is where we wind up. Next week, we are going to pray. I want you to listen to me very carefully today because if you are not blessable, anything we pray next week isn't going to do a bit of good for you. I'm going to be honest with you up front. Okay? You have to be in a position where God can bless you. And uh, so this is uh, the idea of being blessable. So untrustworthy stewards. Many of the parables you read in the New Testament are actually stories of stewardship. A steward in Bible days was a manager. And the idea, many of the stories have a similar theme. An owner, a wealthy man, is going away for various reasons. There was no internet. He couldn't manage it from afar So he would put his money or his possessions into the hands of a steward, a manager. Your job as a steward was to manage what belongs to somebody else on his behalf. And that was the the decisions that we have. Matthew 25, verse 14. For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. Okay, that is uh, an idea that's repeated again and again in there. All right, listen to me. You are a steward. You are a manager. Every single person here, God has given you an, an amount of money, an amount of resources. The amount is different for every person. That's the way that life works in the kingdom as well but you are a manager. Whatever is put in your hands, God expects when you make a decision that it is in the best interest of the owner. That's called stewardship. Many of the stories that are listed in the New Testament are stories of bad stewardship. A manager who's managing what belongs to somebody else and he's not doing well or he's not doing the right uh, thing Luke sixteen one. He also said to his disciples, "There was a certain rich man who had a steward, and an accusation was brought to him that this man was wasting his goods." Okay, wasting his goods. Imagine 
Somebody hands you a large amount of money, says, I'm going to be gone for X number of months or a year, and then I'll be back. And so you, you men take care of it as though I was here. Yeah, and when you get back, uh, hey, where's my money? And they go, ah, I spent it. Like, on what? Oh, you know, it's gone. Would you be happy about somebody spending all of your money? No, but there are stewards, there are managers Christians who manage God's resources, and that's what they do. It's bad stewardship. Two kinds of bad stewards. If you are either of these, what we pray next week is not going to help you. The first kind of bad steward is when, God, when blessing produces bad things in you. This is the first kind of person God can't bless them if the blessing is going to hurt you. I see this through the years. I've now pa uh, pastored for over 36 years as of uh, you know, 2022 here. I have seen through the years, there are people, they desperately need financial blessings. They pray God gives it to them and it hurts them. I see people, it hurts their salvation. Pastored in Johannesburg, South Africa, in the area where I was, the official unemployment rate was 37%. And it went up, depending on age group, et cetera, et cetera, up to in the 70 percentile. So you, jobs were a big deal. So there are people, they're literally, I need to eat, pray, pastor, I need a job. We would pray for a job, and I would never see them again. I'd run into them later on, like, what happened? I'm working. I'm blessed but you're going to violate the one who blessed you? Wow. I'm going to pray that God take that job back. Let's, let's pray. <laughs> no, honestly, come on. Is it better you go to hell with a job? Right? So there are people, it literally hurts their salvation or they dishonor the one that blessed them in the first place. They can't be involved, they can't do the will of God because God blessed them. The problem for many people is they forget where the blessing came from. Deuteronomy 8, 8 uh, 12 through 14. Otherwise, when you eat and are satisfied, when you build fine houses and settle down, and when your herds and flocks grow large and your silver and gold increase and all you have is multiplied, then your heart will become proud and you will forget the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. So God says this is one of the problems for some people with money is God gives them money and they become proud and take credit for it. Right? They're desperate. I can't eat. I need a job. God gives them a job. They go, yeah, there it was. I went in the job interview and they were so impressed. Well, the last 57 interviews, they, didn't, they weren't impressed. That was God. He helped you. He gave you the ability that you have to even get a job, and we, we do that. And then, of course, ingratitude. If God gives you something good, you should be thankful. But, of course, there are many people, they have no appreciation or gratitude for what God gives. Luke 17, 17. So Jesus answered and said, where are the, where, were there not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? Ten leper, leprosy in those days would absolutely ruin your entire life. You couldn't even meet with your own family, your own children, your wife, your husband. Nothing. You had no contact. You were going to die uh, a, a horrible death. They didn't have any cure for it in those days. Jesus heals them. They are totally healed. You can be with your family. You can work a job. You can go on. And out of 10 of them, only one man came back to say thank you. But that's, that's true. As I say, I've seen through the years, I have prayed God's blessing on someone, and they have no gratitude toward God at all. If that's the case, if blessing, if you're not going to respond correctly, and it's going to hurt you, then it would be better that God not bless you. Second, 
kind of bad steward is when you fail to use God's money for God's purposes. We are talking about prosperity. God can give you a job. He can give you money in many different ways. But the whole idea is you manage it on God's behalf. He has no problem with you buying stuff. He has no problem you using that money as long as you remember it belongs to him. And you must show him that you agree. You have people that God blesses them with money and then they fail to tithe. God has designed the plan of tithing the first 10% of his income. He doesn't do that because he needs your money. Do you understand this? God's not in heaven like, how can we, we can sell chickens. No, we can tithe. That's not, you are, need to tithe for you. It's not for God. He, if he can create the whole world, right? Let it be. God could just say in the church bank account, <laughs> right? But we need to tithe. There are people, God gives them money, they don't tithe. Malachi 3, verse 8. Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, in what way have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. If you don't tithe, you're a thief. Simple. You may be a Christian thief, <laughs> which is an oxymoron, isn't it? Those two words should not go together. But you're a thief. And I've watched this through the years. There are people like, oh God, I need it. And God blesses them and they're doing well. They start buying stuff. And then all of a sudden it's like, and it all falls apart and they lose all their money. It's like, what happened? Well, uh, I stopped tithing. <laughs> Why would you do that? It belongs to God. If you rob God, if you're not going to honor God in the tithe, He's not going to give you more. It just won't end. Biblically, he'll actually take away what you have. If you fail to invest in what God loves, God loves the kingdom of God. The New Testament manifestation of that is the church. Through the church, that is how souls that God loves get saved. That's how lives, people that God loves, their lives are transformed. If you won't invest in what God loves, he's not going to give you more money. Genesis 12, verse 2. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. And you shall be a blessing. I will bless you. And clearly we can read uh, Abram's life that this involved money. He says, I want you to be a blessing. And that's uh, true in many different ways. Uh, this is, of course, not only the kingdom of God, then we talked about investing in generosity in other people. So if you, if, if prosperity, if we're going to pray next week for God to bless you and give you more, but you're not going to respond correctly and it's actually going to hurt you, it won't work. Probably the prayer won't work at all. Or secondly, we would actually be hurting you by praying that God give you more. This is simple. This is not rocket surgery, right? God doesn't, so you'll, you'll get that joke later on. God doesn't bless bad stewardship. You know what happens when God sees someone and he says you're a bad steward? He doesn't let supernatural blessing come into your hands. If you're a bad steward, we're talking about more than math. I'm talking about God intervening and giving you finances and resources supernaturally. That doesn't happen to bad stewards. Some people are praying, God bless me, bless me, but he knows you're a bad steward. And I wonder if God ever wants to go, you're kidding, right? Is that a joke? You're stealing from me, but bless me and give me more. That, that's just not going to work. I believe, biblically, that there are some people God says, I love you too much to give you more money. Because you won't do the right thing. Now, that, that doesn't mean that he won't, or you can't fix that. But if you're going to be a bad steward, God won't bless you. Proverbs 30, verse 7 through 9. Two things I ask of you, O Lord, 
Do not refuse me before I die. Keep falsehood and lies from me. Give me neither poverty nor riches, but give me only my daily bread. Otherwise, I may have too much and disown you and say, Who is the Lord? Or I may become poor and steal and so dishonor the name of my God. Okay, now there, of course, are people who would take this scripture and say, See, we shouldn't ask God for more money. But that's this guy. That's personal. Because if you take the whole of scripture, there are plenty of people that God gave a lot of money. So obviously this scripture does not apply to every person. But it's you. If you, if you can't handle prosperity, then God won't give it. It just won't work. In fact, not only will God not give supernatural blessing, for some people, he takes finances away from them, knowing that it hurts them. Listen, if your job keeps you from ever serving God, God can fix that. Right? You go, I, got, I just got so many investments, I just have no time for church. God can fix that, and I've seen it. If you make money an idol, what did God do to Dagon in the Philistine temple? He smashed their idol. God says, I don't want you to have any idols ahead of me. So they, they put God's ark, the presence of God in Dagon's temple, and God says, listen, if you got another God, I can fix that. They come in the morning, he's on his face, they thought, wow, it must have been a big wind. They prop him up, they're not getting it. God says, you're not getting this, are you? Smash. When they come in the next day, Dagon has no head, no hands. Do you know what? I've seen people, like God is trying to give you a gentle reminder. He's pushing over your idol, and you keep propping it up. God says, well, then we can fix this. And there are people that God takes it away. That, that's not inevitable. This is a choice. Matthew 25, 28 and 29. Take the talent from him and give it to the one who has the ten talents. For everyone who has will be given more, and he will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken from him. Okay, what I just told you is Bible. That's, it's based on this verse. God says, first of all, talent is not guitar playing or acting. It is money. And he says... Everyone who has, by definition, is uses correctly what's given to them. What do they get? More. And they'll have abundance. But whoever does not have, which by definition is does not use it correctly as God intended, what does he say? Take it away from them. Let me find somebody that I can trust. You need less. That is not what you want. You don't want uh, God to do that. One of the profound lessons about money that every person needs to have is this. Money is a test. God gives you money, and he watches what you do with it. Listen, he pays attention. Because it's a test. That's, that's many of the stewardship stories the master would give them some money. He'd go away and then he'd come back. Uh, how did you use it? What did you do with it? And that determined it was a test. I, I've said that many times when we were uh, uh, in South Africa, you know, that in any area of poverty, money is a huge issue of whether or not they can be honest. We're talking a, a culture of corruption. So I wanted to know for the future who I could trust, and so uh, I want to tell you up front, I would test guys. I would send them down to the shop while we're working on the building to buy something. I already knew how much it cost. And I would deliberately give them a bit more than they needed. Now, back then it was 14 to 1. didn't change my life at all. What I wanted to know is whether they would bring me change. And we're talking minuscule amounts. They'd bring me back $2 worth of change in U.S. dollars. Minor. It doesn't change my life if they give me back $2, but it would change their life. It was a test. And I'd watch. There are guys I give it, and they come out. 
Hey, where's the change? Oh, oh, yeah, that's right. It was a test. There are other guys. They come back. Pastor, here's the change. I'd say, I can trust this guy. That's a good sign. That's what God does. Everybody here, God gives you money, and then he watches what you do with it. He's going to watch in the offering today. Did you know that? Jesus went in the temple. Where did he? Back in those days, they didn't pass the plate. There was no app. They had a box at the back, and Jesus stood like right next to the box. Mm-hmm. But that's what God does every offering. That's what God does every payday. He watches because it's a test, and the test is whether or not God can give you more. Deuteronomy 8, verse 2. Remember how the Lord your God led you all the way in the desert these 40 years to humble you and to test you in order to know what is in your heart, whether or not you would keep his commands. God says you had a 40-year-long test. Life is a test. He puts things in your hands and he watches it. It's a test. Can I trust you? Thomas Carlyle said adversity is hard on a man. In other words, trouble. Life has problems, right? Adversity is hard on a man, but for every hundred that can handle adversity, there's only one that can handle prosperity. That's a profound quote. And this is, I see people that like, their life, they're going through hell, but they keep serving God. And then God blesses them and gives them a lot of money, and they fold like a cheap accordion. Blessing. Can you be trusted? This is the key. All right, we're going to talk about the second point, then we'll open for questions. Let's talk about searching for people to bless. If your view of God is we have to force God to bless us, then you don't understand who God is. Biblically, God is looking for people that he can bless. He wants to bless to the point that he is looking, asking, who can I bless? Second Chronicles 16, verse 9. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. Okay, this is a man named Asa in trouble. He doesn't trust the Lord. And the prophet says, don't you get it? The eyes of the Lord, that's just simply the idea that God is looking. And what is it? He is looking for someone that he can help. He can be strong on their behalf. In this case, it's money. God wants to be strong on your behalf in the area of money. He's looking for that. Why would God want? This is the whole idea. And I understand, based on some of you, your background, your experience, I do understand that when I began this series and was talking about the idea of prosperity and giving you more, some of you, that made you very uncomfortable, doesn't it? The whole idea, like, I, I just think that's unspiritual, that we should be asking. But it's actually logical, isn't it? It's in God's best interest to give you more money. Because if God gives you more, his kingdom will be blessed. His purposes will be blessed. This is logical, isn't it? It's math. If you have more money, you can do more good. Right? Some of you right now, is that you want to give to the Lord? You can give $1.63. We can do $1.63 worth of good. Wouldn't it be better if you had 10,000 extra? 50,000? Wouldn't that be better? You could do, it's math. It's logical. That's why God wants to give you more. And then, of course, we said that when God gives you money, he wants you to help other people. The more money you have, if you understand God's purposes, that means the more other people will be blessed. So this is why we're not trying to force God to bless us. I tell you plainly, God is looking right now, who can I give more money, more resources 
to, so here's a simple question. If God's looking for people to bless, why don't you be that person? Why don't we be the one? Like, why don't you put your hand up and go, me? Amen. Right? That's the whole, <laughs> our sister wants it here. So this brings us now, this is our, the, the title of our lesson today. So if God is looking for people to bless, here's my question. Are you blessable? I don't even know if that's a word, but it needs to be. And if it does, I'm copywriting it. If you start selling t-shirts that says blessable, you remember who made it up, right? <laughs> Are you blessable? Would you qualify today for blessings? Based on the criteria that we said about being a good steward, can you be trusted with blessings? That's what it means to be blessable. God wants, he's looking if he can find people who will honor him, who the blessing won't ruin them, who will use what he gives for his purposes, he has no problem giving you more than you have right now. Luke 16, verse 10 through 12. Whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. So if you have not been trustworthy in handling worldly wealth, who will trust you with true riches? And if you have not been trustworthy with someone else's property, who will give you property of your own? Okay, this is tacked on to the end of a uh, stewardship parable. And he says, this is being blessable, isn't it? Are you blessable? Let's look. Are you honest? Some of you has, have businesses, but your business practices, you're a little shifty. God says that's not going to work. You don't, you don't do shifty business. And then invite somebody, I, I'd like to tell you about Jesus. That's not going to work, but especially this isn't going to work in the area of money. Then God says, I give you the amount. Right now, some of you have little you're barely making it. You are like, don't make waves. You're like up to here. You say, I want more, but God says, but you're not doing the right thing with the amount that you have. That's being blessable, right? And then what belongs to somebody else. This has the idea of being blessable, qualifying, or being able to be trusted with more. So then... I don't, I don't want to make this a, like a nebulous theory, like we need to be blessable. And you all go, yes. What does that mean? I don't know, but it sounds good. <laughs> Let's get practical. What does it mean? What would make us blessable? Number one, you need to make a covenant with God in advance. Before you get the blessing, you and God need to come to an agreement. A covenant, a covenant is stronger than, yeah, I think so. A covenant is a vow, it's a promise, it's an oath. I swear, I promise God, if you will give me more, I will do right. Genesis 28, 20 through 22. Then Jacob made a vow, saying, if God will be with me and keep me in this way that I am going, and give me bread to eat and clothing to put on so that I come back to my father's house in peace, then the Lord shall be my God. And this stone which I have set as a pillar shall be God's house. And of all that you give me, I will surely give you a tenth to you. Okay, what Jacob did is he made a covenant with God in advance. He didn't have any money right now. He didn't have a job right now. He's on his way to where he's going to have a job, but he says, God, if you will bless me before I ever get anything, here's what I'm going to do. I will do right. See, that's what we're going to do next week. Next week, part of the prayer, we're going to break any curses you've incurred on yourself or your family's incurred, but we're going to make a covenant with God. This is very serious. 
I used to pray for people in South Africa and high unemployment. Okay, before we pray, do you swear that you're going to do the right thing? Yes, Pastor. And some of them were lying. Their Pinocchio nose was growing. But, <laughs> but nonetheless, I was challenging them. I want you to make a covenant with God. God, if you give me more, it doesn't matter how much you give me, I will do right. Secondly, what makes you blessable? Current faithfulness. Luke 16, verse 10. Whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. So he says, this is all dependent on how you are right now. You want more? You currently need to be faithful. If you haven't been, you need to repent today. Sort this out. You need to be doing the right thing with whatever amount because every time God gives you an amount, it's a test. Current faithfulness makes you blessable. If you're not going to be, if you're not faithful now, asking for more, just, it's illogical. It's not going to work. Third thing is a carefulness when you are blessed. And by careful, that's not only how you spend it, what you do with it, it's an attitude of worship and gratitude. Remember we read out of Proverbs 8 before that the problem of money, money has the power to make you forget. Right? People get money like, God who? I don't need God. I got a bank account. So the antidote to forgetting is, you ready for this? Remembering. <laughs> Write that down. That was good. <laughs> this is a Bible principle. God says, I want you to remember. Deuteronomy 8, verse 18. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, and that he may establish his covenant which he swore unto thy fathers as it is this day. Okay. This is in advance. God says you're going into the land, I'm going to give you money and I'm going to give you a lot of it. So what I want you to do with it, I want you to remember. Money has the power to make you forget. How do you keep yourself safe? Remember. The word means think about it. Meditate upon it. Pay attention to it, Psalm 103, verse 2. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. If you read Psalms 103, he goes through a list. Are you a grateful person? Do you know there are times where I just spend time thinking through all of the blessings that God gives because gratitude produces a willingness to give. I, I think a few weeks ago, my wife told me she was just thinking about good things that God had done, and she, I, I, I put in some extra money in the offering. Because that's what gratitude does. It's like, God, I can't believe how good you've been to me. That, that keeps us safe. I rehearse, I remember. I'll, sometimes I'm driving. If you think, if you look at me, I'm not talking on the phone, I'm talking to God sometimes. I'm going through all of the goodness of God that he's brought in my life because that, that protects me. It keeps me safe. If God gives me more money, that's one of the ways that I can make sure that I remain blessable is if I remain thankful. And that's true for you. So when you put that together, that makes us blessable or gives us the ability that God is able to give us more. Okay, let's open for questions or comments, something you want to ask, something you want to add. Vicki, over here. I just wanted to share just a couple of real short stories about how God's so faithful. Um, we were um, pastoring up in Portland, and Portland is a really rainy city. I mean, I don't know what the percentage of rain you get, but it's constantly raining there. And um, so I was at the laundromat and everybody was walking around with these raincoats on. Like, you know, they were like lightweight coats, but they were rainproof. And I was thinking, God, I, I really need to get one of those. You know, I just, 
I mean, you know, I was just thinking that. I go home from laundry, and in the mail is a package from my mom of a coat, of a, a really pretty coat that I had for years that was waterproof, rainproof, light and rainproof. That's just one instance of God's faithfulness. And the other one is, um, um, gosh, now I can't remember the other one. Oh, well. <laughs> I, had it, I had it in my mind. It was just, it's so, yeah. God is just so good. And he's always been faithful to us. He's always met our, oh, I know what it was. So we bought, my husband bought a motorcycle. And we were in Glendale, and we bought a motorcycle. And his motorcycle, and he'd only had it for like a week. And his motorcycle got stolen. And uh, so, I mean, it was stolen, you know, from somebody who were. And so we were sitting there, and I just, um, my husband was with the police officer and, and talking, doing the report. And I went up to my bedroom, and I just prayed. I said, God, y you know, you know that, that we don't want to be paying a payment on a motorcycle that we don't even have. You know, I said, just please, God, help us. And so literally within an hour, the police officer found two motorcycles that had been stolen. One was Dwayne's, one was another person's. The one that was the other person was completely, like, shred, like, uh, destroyed. Ours was perfect. Nothing was wrong with it. Yeah. And God, God found it for us. So God's yes. just really faithful. He is good. He's faithful. He helps us. Joel. I know over the years, Jeannie and I have been really blessed even with everything we've gone through, but what do you say to the person who can't resolve if it's God not blessing them for their own good or if it's the devil ripping them off to where that person can't decide? Well, but there are measurable ways, right? So if you're a tither, if you're honoring God, you should be blessed, right? So if you're honoring God, I just gave you two simple ways. Number one is if blessing keeps you from the house of God, it's not in your best interest. But there are people, they are faithfully coming to church. The second simple measuring point is, uh, is tithing. If you are honoring God, and then of course giving to God and other people. So there are people who are doing that. They are in covenant with God and they're not blessed. That means it's from hell. Right? So, and, and the simple thing, all right, let, let's, let's say not everybody has the same capacity, right? There, there are some people, a hundred million dollars wouldn't do some people good. But, but God gives you accordingly. It grows. So wouldn't, I am a firm believer, people often come to me and they say, yeah, this is what I, I why don't you ask for that? Why don't you then pray that God would give you the capacity to be able to handle more money? Right? Yeah, I guess. Kind of thinking it's like, you know, how payday doesn't always come on Friday, you know? Uh, yeah, I'm that, aware of that. That person is just, at that point, struggling, you know? I mean, just how to encourage them. <laughs> well, yeah, but I, I think the, the whole point is, if you are doing the right thing and you are not blessed, that is not God's will. That's, that's my foundational point. I'm doing the right thing, I'm honoring God. If I'm not blessed, it is not God's will, it's from hell, so let's fight it. I don't know whether I can fix it by this afternoon, I don't know whether that'll take some time, but at the end of the day, I know that it is God's will. That's what you have to settle. I'm teaching this so your foundational level is God wants me to be blessed, right? So that, that is what I want. Let's, let's move on and I will open again. Final thought, let's talk about setting the limits. The whole point of me teaching this is whatever level you're at financially right now, you can have more than you have right now. I'm not a TV preacher. I did not say to all of you, you'll be a multimillionaire by Tuesday. If you put an offering in today, you'll, you'll, you'll have a million dollars by tonight. I'm, that's not what I'm saying. There may be a process, et cetera, et cetera. But the point is God wants you to have more. And some of you, if you are barely making it week by week, that's from hell. That's not right. It stresses you out. It distracts you. That's not God's will. He wants you to have more. Matthew 25, 20 and 21. 
So he who had received five talents came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents besides them. His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you a ruler over many things. Enter okay. into the joy of my Lord. Okay, few? That's what you have right now? What do I want? Many. Do what's right. I want to give you more than you have. Luke 16, 10. Whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. Okay. Little, much. Right now, some of you, you're struggling. You have little. But God's will is much. The more God can trust you, the more he can give to you. Like I said, for most of you, it's not going to be, I'm going to pray today and I get $100 million in my account by this afternoon. That's not how it works. But you are faithful, you're trustworthy, God does a miracle that increases, and then you do right with a new amount. And God says, I can trust you, so I can give you more. This is, a, this is a, 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 an issue of trust, but foundational. I pray that you get through this series. God wants you to have more. And then I'm, I'm reminding you one more time before we pray next week, in some ways, you set the limits. Right? There is an, an ability issue, and I get that, that. But in life, you can have more. You can't say, I want as much as Bill Gates. By, that's, not, that's not up to you. But you certainly set your own limit in life. That is an issue of faith. Luke 6, verse 38. Give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Okay, with the measure you use. When you understand and you break into the dimension of faith, God wants me to be blessed. When you break into this understanding, seed is how the kingdom works. I give out. I, I taught on that. Therefore, there's a faith issue, whatever measure. Some of you, you got a little bit of faith, so you've got a little bit of giving, then you'll get a little bit of blessing. But if you can increase and trust God, of course, you've got to deal with debt, you've got to budget, all the things deal with funky attitudes. 2 Corinthians 9, verse 6. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Okay, this is a proportional is, is, is if your faith is, I can only trust God with a little bit, God says, then that's how I return it. But when you break into the dimension of faith, when you understand God's not trying to hurt you, if he asks you for something, he's not trying to hurt you. It's because he wants to bless you. Whenever people get that understanding, God gives more. Let me close with two stories. There have been people in history that God has blessed with incredible resources. Some of you right now, you're thinking, if I had a thousand extra dollars, do you know that God can give you immense amounts of money if you can be trusted with it? A man named R.G. Letourneau. R.G. Letourneau was a Christian. He, he was an earth mover. That's what his business was, was moving dirt for highways and pipelines and, and different things. R.G. Letourneau, he and his wife made a covenant. They started tithing. And he said when he started tithing, God would wake him up at night and he would have ideas to make new earth-moving machines or to modify the one he had so they could do it better. And because of that, two things. One, in his business, they could move more dirt, which was make more money. And then his ideas in machinery, he could sell them. God would give them ideas. When he started, he was tithing. That's bare minimum. We taught on that, 10%. But God began to bless him. So then R.G. Letourneau, then he was giving 20%, living on 80%. And God gave him more money. So he started giving 30%, living on 70%, 40%, living on 50 and 50, 40 and 
this grew at the end of R.G. Letourneau's life. He and his wife, they were giving away 90% of their income and living on 10% because God gave them so much money. R.G. Letourneau did that. It was a miracle from God he freely acknowledged, but R.G. Letourneau, with every new amount, God could trust him. So God knew it's not going to hurt him if I give him more. I'll give him more. And he honored God. So he was living on 10% and living well because of the blessing of God. David Green wanted to start a craft shop. So he borrowed $600 to start his craft shop. Anybody know what it's called today? Hobby Lobby. With his $600 loan, he began to honor God, began to tithe and began to give. David Green's personal net wealth, when I looked it up a few weeks ago, they say he personally, he has $7.2 billion. And that's not counting the kids and the rest of the family or the whole business. He has $7.2 billion. If you've ever read his book, he has an entire foundation that it requires work for the family to get together. We need to give away hundreds of millions of dollars. Not five bucks. We want to give away hundreds of millions, and they do that every year. And God gives him more. His net worth is growing every day. Why? Because David Green can be trusted. David Green is blessable. I don't think he has the t-shirt. He probably has a tuxedo that says blessable. <laughs> right? So that's, that's why, do you understand? Some of you, I believe in our church there are people that God could give you resources and the gift of giving. You could do great amounts of good. Great amounts. Not only could you be blessed, your family be blessed, you could do an incredible amount of good in the world. Imagine, just think about one, one simple thing. Is we have churches all over the world, some of them are struggling in funky little buildings that they have to rent. I, I know churches where, you know, 50% of their income goes towards rent. What if someone was to be so blessed that they could buy churches' buildings? So they could live rent-free. Wouldn't, wouldn't that be a good thing? Again, I'm not saying all of you need more money because everybody needs a pink Cadillac, right? I'm saying the more God gives you, the more good you can do. So that's why God says, I want you to be blessable. So you sort this out. Why don't you have honest conversation with God between now and next Sunday. Because next Sunday is when we're going to pray. The decisions you make in advance will in some ways determine whether or not this prayer is going to do you any good. But I believe that God wants to give you more. That's the basis of the whole lesson. Amen. Okay. Now, more comments or questions? Melissa. I was just thinking when you said um, that you should make a covenant with God ahead of time. When I was in Gallup, we were having revival with the youth, and I was, I think I was like 21, so I was like the older person, and everyone would come over to my apartment. And, um, and I basically was having fellowships and following up on people, and I didn't have enough to do that. And so I was like, God, if you give me a raise, I'll use it to you know, take people out and just be a blessing. And um, I got called into my boss's office and he's like, I was thinking we're not paying you enough. And he gave me a $4 an hour raise. And so I was like, oh, cool, you know. And um, so my first paycheck, I remember I was so excited and I did like a big, huge fellowship after an outreach. And, um, and then I took out a couple of girls, like I stayed faithful to that. Well, he called me in again and gave me another $5 an hour raise. And so that was, what was year time. was that? This was uh, 
10 years ago? 10 years least. ago. So yeah. $9 an hour extra. Yes. That's yes. a significant so raise. I was just, yeah, it was a huge, I mean, I was absolutely mind blown. So it was just a really cool reference point. Praise God. Now, if I was a TV preacher, I'd say, let's give the Lord some praise right now. <laughs> That's good. God is able. That's making a covenant in advance. Yes. What will you do with the blessing God gives? I can't see who that is, but go ahead. Yep. Sister. Um, I was going to say, uh, in the very beginning of salvation, someone told me to tithe, and so I always did. Um, but I felt compelled to teach my children the same principle. And so at a very young age, my oldest one had a job at eight years old, delivering papers. And so I, you know, challenged him to tithe. And so that's just something I've always done. I've gotten a hard time from people, you know, to do that because they're kids. Yep. But um, I remember when my oldest one was in junior high school and he lost his wallet. He was going to Parkview Middle School. And I said, well, we're just going to pray and believe God. And it was one of those times that it took a while. And a lady called after the winter and said she found a wallet under the snow. And he had dropped it as he was walking. Yep. And so he had to wait a few months, but the $2 that he had in there was still there. And so that's what I've taught my kids. And Good. I feel like it's important as they grow. Yes, you gotta instruct, instruct your children. One more, Eli. Is there such thing as credibility with God? And what I mean is uh, if promises are broken, would he seek consistency over time, even a small amount of time? <laughs> Uh, be before maybe releasing his full will uh, towards blessing? Well, you know, obviously, again, if you have been unfaithful up till now, it's unlikely the blessing will be $100 million tomorrow, right? That's just logical common sense. You, 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 but let's balance what, what, what you say. You have two different things. Number one, you have the people who, you know, I have been unwise with God, so... I have to grovel for 17 years before God will trust. No, is you can repent. That's the key. If you, re God is not like us. Some of you people go, I'm sorry. And you go, yeah, right. That's not what God does. He will take your word for it. If you say, I want to repent. I want to change it. He'll take your word. You don't have probationary period. But of course, then the logical, the balance of that is, of course, the amount is you, you then uh, become trustworthy over time. So are you gonna ask something else? Say it loud. That's it? You want a percentage? That, that, that's all I was asking is in terms of scale, and you kind of covered that. Scale, yeah, 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 scale, that's it. Stephen Cassio is working on the app, then he'll know the scale perfectly. <laughs> Mark, last one. You gotta be quick. Is there a, a there was a pastor that preached that an amount that you want to have, you should tithe. Is that anywhere no. scripturally? No. Uh, number one, if, if God tells you to give an amount, I have no problem doing anything God tells you. But biblically, if someone says you need to tithe on the amount, uh, if you wanted $100 million, could you tithe on $100 million a day? No, that's illogical. Number two, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 16, set aside by in store according to what he has, not what you do not have. That's why when I take offerings, I don't take faith offer. I want you to give by, by faith that you're going to have $100 million because that's not biblical. The Bible says you give according to what you have now. So that's the biblical understanding. God bless you. Service will start in five minutes. Amen.